All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Good morning. Uh, good evening. My name is Padmaja, and I welcome you to the uh, this webinar where we'll be covering anonymous reporting in uh, employee relations. Um, and I would a couple of disclaimers before we start off. Um, you know, a safe harbor for whatever is coming up. Uh, for discussion now, um, it's 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 in the product. Uh, in although this is a release feature, we just like to uh, give this heads up before we start off any demo. So uh, just putting it there uh, for everybody to see. Um, yeah. Um, so we will have everybody on mute when they join in. Uh, there will be a Q and A at the end of the session, um, and. Uh, I encourage uh, any questions uh, that you may have, and you know, uh, please feel free to sort of come off mute, introduce yourself, or put in uh, the questions on on the on the chat or or the Q and A. Um, and um, we'll also have a, a quick poll uh, for you uh, in between the presentation. And I really look forward to to knowing uh, more uh, from your side uh, on on the uh, anonymous uh, reporting piece in employee relations. A uh, quick introduction. Uh, again, thank you uh, everyone for joining. Um, my name is Padmaja and I'm a principal product manager in, in ServiceNow. I, I manage the employee relations product. Um, and today I'll be taking you through the anonymous report center that we are introducing in our San Diego release. Uh, we have a quick poll uh, for you as, as we start off, uh, since this is a feature that's coming up in San Diego. Uh, we would just like to understand if you have the ER plugin, if you do not have it and plan to use it, uh, or you have already activated, you're already aware of what the anonymous center, uh, anonymous report center is. All right, uh, I'm gonna let it stay for five more seconds. So I see about 16 of the participants uh, saying they are considering using anonymous report center uh, one of um, one of you all saying that you have activated the plugin. So I uh, really look forward to uh, you know walking you through this feature and really hoping that you all see value in it. Um, and also you know I'm super keen to hear from you all as well uh, as to what you or you think you know we got right in the feature and you know some hopefully some improvements as well for for us to take back. All right. Um, so primarily the idea behind introducing anonymous report center was uh, two key challenges that our customers were facing. Uh, we already had a misconduct service under the employee relations uh, COE. And one of the prime things when it comes to just, uh, you know, uh, reporting uh, misconduct type of issues or in generally in employee relations issues, uh, the number one challenge is that unless there is confidentiality ensured, um, employees are not so forthcoming when it comes to reporting issues. And this sort of impacts the organization where they're unable to maintain that complete, uh, you know, um, security for the employee to come for, you know, uh, come forth and talk about any issues they might be facing. Um, and the second key aspect is just enabling access to external users, not just internal employees. How can we have a uh, a system, an interface where external users who may have uh, encountered some issues while dealing with the company, or they may have witnessed some uh, some problematic behavior, um, you know, how would they be able to sort of report this? So, uh, to address these two challenges, uh, you know, is why we introduced the anonymous report center, and and the whole um, the process or the ideology behind it is what you see on the screen. Um, we have a public uh, uh, facing portal which which any user whether it's an internal user of, uh, of our customer or an external user who does not have access to the ServiceNow system, wants to 
log in, create, uh, you know, a complaint, uh, raise an issue, um, can do so by accessing this portal. They will be submitting this case uh, anonymously. They will be given a report key and, and password, which they can sort of um, keep it handy and, you know, enter later on to keep a track of the case, leave any additional comments on the case and just be able to track, with, uh, track the case with the agent. Um, and the agent can sort of communicate with the user who still remains anonymous throughout. Uh, so the level of confidentiality here is so that even the ServiceNow admins will not know who really submitted the case. So it's, it's a completely secure sort of way uh, to ensure your employees as well as external users uh, can report uh, issues. It's, it's, it's uh, one of the channels that you can use and implement to sort of uh, support the whistleblower, uh, you know, whistleblower uh, issue reporting. Uh, some quick things about uh, ARC employee uh, uh, anonymous report center in employee relations is uh, this is a new plugin in itself um, that can be that is that can be used by other processes. For example, you might in your company have uh, you know ethics, uh, compliance, and employee relations um, all maybe handled by one practice, and you want this portal to be leveraged by other practices within your company, you can do so with this, uh, this particular feature. Um, we have given a few, you know, few uh, things out of box, one of them being the anonymous report misconduct service. There is already a report misconduct service, which was rolled out in our first release of employee relations back in Paris. Uh, early 2020, uh, we have uh, introduced the anonymous report misconduct, which essentially is the entire end-to-end -end anonymous uh, handling of, of a case, of a misconduct case. Um, this is, like I mentioned before, a public portal that also supports non-employees uh, who can you know, go ahead and create a case. Uh, and this plugin, uh, Employee Relations itself, uh, is available in uh, HRST Professional and above. Uh, with that said, uh, I will take you through some um, screenshots of how the feature looks, after which I'll be going into the demo. Um, in our portal, we again give this uh, service out of box, so you'll be able to see one catalog item, which is uh, Visit Anonymous Report Center. Uh, this is a public portal, and as soon as uh, a user, uh, whether it's an employee or non-employee, who, who tries to access this, uh, they are immediately logged out and then they're, they're able to sort of submit the case as a guest user. Um, they are shown uh, this particular form where they fill in what was the incident they noticed, who were the people that were involved, when the incident took place and where the incident took place. They're also asked how they would like to be, um, you know, uh, communicated with. Uh, obviously in this, in this format, it's completely anonymous. So the only way you can communicate is uh, through the comments on the case. And um, there is uh, basically this process to be able to submit a case. And once the case is submitted, the, 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 the submitter here, the requester here is given a report key and a report number, which are essential for them to be able to track this case later on and to be able to even access this case, leave some comments. They can also download a PDF copy of this report for future reference. Um, and once they want to be able to, you know, uh, again, track the case, uh, like I said, they, need, they would need the report number and the report key to be able to do that. The agent can ask for updates and, and the end user can continue to give those updates anonymously and continue to sort of track uh, how the case is going. So now I will go into the demo. Uh, so the, for the purpose of today's webinar, I have this instance where uh, I'm going to log in as able. So I'm quickly going to go to the employee center. So for the purpose of this demo, we've 
have it configured under the HR section under employee conduct, but ideally, um, depending on how you are, you see it fit, basically, you know, uh, if it falls into your legal or your compliance team or generally under HR, then, you know, you can accordingly arrange it. Uh, we have it under employee conduct and we have the Visit Anonymous Report Center. We also have a, a knowledge article that we, we give out of box, which is, uh, you know, just some basic end user documentation on how, you know, how employees can go about filing, um, you know, and following up on anonymous, uh, anonymous complaints. So uh, like you see, I've been signed out as able um, and I would go ahead to continue. Again, we have on this page, um, either the option to submit an anonymous report or to be able to follow up. Uh, so right now I'll be going into the submit report and we have some, you know, uh, Q&A, um, FAQ, FAQ section as well, where we sort of try to guide the user on, uh, to the employer or, or, you know, external user on how they can go about making uh, an anonymous complaint. And also some added information on is the report confidential or not. Um, like I mentioned previously, now, since the user is logged out, uh, really, you know, it's a, it's sort of logged in as a guest user now uh, when you're, you're creating this complaint. And um, uh, even even our even the service now admins will not have sort of you know uh, an idea of who actually created uh, this this uh, case. So um, there are some sections we've given where you know this can come in handy when uh, user first time goes through this this particular uh, page. And uh, once I go into actually filing a complaint. So we have given report misconduct as a service over here. Uh, ideally, obviously, the customers can go ahead and uh, create more services, more catalog items under the anonymous uh, report center section. Um, uh, we have heard previously that customers may want to sort of make it available in general, not just for misconduct, maybe maybe general you know, employee relations issues as such. Uh, you're also free to do that. Uh, we have given report misconduct as an out-of-box service. So I would say I witnessed. This premises. Um, I can say service. Um, I don't know. And some other person. Um, Enter this to ensure that it's a person entering this complaint. And now I'll be going and submitting this case. Uh, I'd be given a report number and a report key. All right, so um, what I'll do is quickly download uh, the report itself. And I will keep these details handy. So I can uh, immediately on this page, um, I can sort of say that, um, you know, some additional details. Um, just for the purpose of the demo, I just, I just keep it simple. Uh, but the essence is that you can leave comments here as, as an anonymous user. And uh, now that you see, it's not yet assigned, but uh, now if I go in again to anonymous report center, I can sort of follow up. Uh, this is where I would need the key and the report number. So let me type that in.
Okay. So uh, here is where I'll, I'll continue to sort of, you know, I can continue to track the case and uh, leave additional information as and when I see fit as, as, the, as the complainant. Uh, I'll quickly go into the agent side of it. The agent for the agent, it's pretty much the same experience where they, they continue to see it as a as an employee relations case. Uh, here, though, you can uh, you would basically treat it as a normal case, and uh, the complainant here would be um, I, I'll go into it. The complainant, which is usually defaulted to the person who created the case, in this case, would be hidden because the user is anonymous. Login as an agent who has access. So now I'm logged in as Isabel, who's uh, an agent in the employee relations assignment group. So by default, I would be having access to any new case that has come in. Since this anonymous report misconduct is a service under the ERCOE, uh, be, uh, any agent who's part of the employee relations assignment group will also be able to see cases under uh, this the, the anonymous service as well. So I'm gonna go. So here is the one that's come in, which is uh, what we just created. I just created as able. Uh, I'm just gonna open this. It's not, uh, it's assigned to me, um, which is Isabel. Um, and this is the information that was given by able, uh, given by the anonymous user while submitting this case. And uh, as you see, uh, for those who, who have some awareness of the employee relations functionality itself, you see that it is a usual, employee relations case assigned to the employee relations skill group assignment group um, and then opened by anonymous reporting user is this is why we have added you know uh, this particular uh, naming uh, opened by is the anonymous user and now when I go here you see that there is no complainant because the user is anonymous which usually in the usual report misconduct service the complainant is defaulted to the person who would have created the case. So uh, now here is where I can go ahead and uh, leave more comments asking for the you know for more for uh, for more information. As you see, um, there is uh, the comment that I had added as the user as the creator of this this anonymous complaint. I can go ahead as the agent on this and I can ask for more work notes, uh, more information. So. And I can ask questions when I'm open to And now um, let me start work on this. Um, some of the functionality you see here already exists, which is a restrict case, uh, which essentially means that I can further restrict an anonymous case uh, to the group that has access to such restricted cases. Uh, so once I click on restrict case, what would essentially happen is uh, as for the configuration that we allow at the COE level for ER, uh, only a limited number of people which who are who have uh, been included in that restrict case group will be able to uh, you know view access this case. So I'll uh, that's the the that's that's you can that's how you can add an added layer of you know security on top of anonymous cases if you uh, you know see the need for it. 
now that i've added some notes for for the guest for the person who has created this case i can log back in as able who was the user who created this let me see if i'm ready Yep. So I see that Isabel uh, is the agent working on this case and, you know, she's asked me a bunch of questions. I can go ahead and, you know, keep that communication open with the agent uh, working on this case. So essentially, uh, this the, the gist of this is that you can continue the communication in an anonymous form uh, on the case with the agent and keep track on it, uh, keep track of the case as long as you have the report key and report number uh, with you. Um, and the agent basically, you know, will continue to have the same, uh, you know, view of the case as, as they were having previously. Uh, we also have some reporting we give generally for ER cases. Uh, it, it can include the anonymous reports, uh, anonymous reports as well, if you would wish so. Um, but uh, basically, this is the end to end of how an employee would go ahead, create an anonymous complaint and how the agent would uh, you know, access that same case and uh, be able to work on it, conduct interviews with uh, the people identified, uh, ask for more information from the anonymous complainant, and simply, just, you know, continue to work on the case and give updates to the, uh, to the complainant as well. I see a question in the Q&A, which is, if I'm an employee, will I find the case under my request? Uh, the answer is no. Um, we are basically logging this as a guest user, uh, you know, case. So you will need the, uh, you know, the, the report number and the report key. Uh, you can only go in and follow up through the anonymous report center page. Um, uh, and also you'll have the links to it in the, in the knowledge article that you're shipping out of box as well. Any other questions for me? Uh, the restrict uh, the restrict case functionality is available from uh, Chrome release, so uh, it's already going to be there on your instance if you're on Rome or above. Um, essentially, it will be activated uh, for any agent who has the restrict case user. So basically, let me go into that real quick, and I can show you what I'm talking about. So restrict case is a functionality we give. It's basically a configuration we give at uh, the COE level. And you will essentially have to be, uh, you know, an admin to configure it, ER admin to configure it. Um, I have that configuration enabled on this instance. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show, which is essentially case restriction under employee relations admin, uh, administration section. Uh, when you go in here, you have, I just went to one configuration that's already there. So you have a, a configuration where you can enable a group, which is ER confidential in this case, to either restrict cases or view restricted cases or do both. So essentially, Isabel uh, is a part of a group that can restrict cases. That is why she sees the restrict uh, UI action on the case form. If she were uh, from the group who were able to only view the restricted cases, she won't see the action to restrict it. Instead, once the case is restricted, it will show up in uh, you know her queue if she's the only one available. So essentially, you can have groups to either be able to restrict cases using the UI action or view the restricted cases. I hope that answers the question. Okay, uh, I'm assuming the anonymous reporter would not get any notifications. That's right. We don't give any notifications to the anonymous reporter here. 
to confirm is this functionality only available with the newer ER table and not supported uh, with the legacy ER table. Yes, that's right, uh, Jacqueline. So this is part of the ER plugin. It is uh, the newer set of tables that we have shipped for ER. Uh, it's it's a new scoped plugin which uh, was available has been available since Paris. Is restrict case available in the original case management or only in ER? It's only available in ER uh, and it's available only for the report misconduct and other services which are created under the ER CLE. Thank you for the question, Erin. Uh, John, uh, hi, is this restricted cases functionality limited to ER cases? Yes, this is limited to ER cases. All right. Uh, you can feel free to, uh, you know, type in your questions. Uh, meanwhile, I'll go back to some resources that can be accessed uh, by you when, you know, you would like to understand this a bit more. We have a community blog posted which details out this feature and, you know, essentially calling out the admin side of it, the employee experience, and even the agent experience of how uh, the, the ARC or the employ, uh, anonymous reporting center will be handled and implemented. And of course, we have the documentation which goes into the aspects of which plugin, which tables, uh, what roles, etc. cetera. Uh, yeah, so, hey, Jacqueline. Uh, does the employee have to log back out again in order to follow up on their submitted case? Uh, they will be logged out. That is right. Uh, so whenever you go into the, um, essentially whenever you go into anonymous report center section, which we are uh, shipping the whole, uh, you know, the topic itself, the catalog item, as well as knowledge articles, whenever you're going into the section of either wanting to create a request or being able to follow up on a request, you become a guest user and you, basically do that whole activity as a guest user. That is how you're able to, whenever you even open the case, uh, you are a guest user and that's how you stay anonymous while leaving comments on the case. So you will be locked out when you're trying to uh, track the case. Uh, yeah, we will have, um, we'll have the resources shared Apurva. So the community blog uh, in essence is, is uh, I think, you know, it details out the whole feature and, you know, uh, gives enough guidance on how to go about it, as does the product documentation. Yep. All right. Uh... If you do not have any other questions, I think, you know, we're, we're good to go. And uh, thank you so much again for joining everyone. And uh, we'll have more webinars coming up. And, you know, uh, if you want to keep yourself updated with the newer features and what's, what, what new exciting stuff is coming up, be sure to register for uh, the events coming up in June.